You may be seated. Thank you for those readings, amen, uh, from the Word of God, the perfect Word of God. It's, it's never easy uh, when you stand and read the Word of God. We thank God for those who are willing to do that, amen. Um, I read the story of a Christian businessman who was travelling in Korea. And he was on a train, he was going through the fields and the villages and looking at the, the people there. And he came across a place where he saw two farmers in the field pulling a plough. And uh, the businessman turned to the crane who was travelling with him and he said to him, I suppose those people are very poor and that's why they're pulling the plough by themselves. <coughs> and well, the Christian who was travelling with him said, I actually know those two men and uh, what the situation is there is they had an ox to pull the plough but they were building their church at the time so they sold the ox so that they could give that for the glory of God and they decided this spring they were going to pull the plough by themselves. And the, the businessman said, well, I, I suppose that's a real sacrifice. And the Christian turned around to him and said, well, that's not how they looked at it. They were just glad they had an ox that they could give. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, there is much to do and say about sacrifice. We live in a day and a time where people, if they don't have their Wi-Fi, consider they're really sacrificing. Amen. But in the Bible, uh, there are many examples of sacrifice. Of course, the greatest sacrifice is the Lord Jesus, amen. He came and he died on this, this world, not for his sins, not for his faults, but for our sins and our, our faults. Isaiah chapter 53 says that the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of his own. He wasn't there because he did something wrong. He was there because I did something wrong. He was there for Tommy's sins. He was there for Bruce's sins. Amen. He was there for Kevin's sins. He was there for all our sins. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But including the Lord Jesus, there are also many lessons for us of sacrifice. It's interesting in our passage of scripture, we find a woman who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, let me just stop there a second. I've forgotten something. Um, would you go and ask your mother for that wee clip thing that I gave her? <coughs> oh, is it here? Okay. Where? Oh. I love it when a plan comes together, eh, man? Just before I forget to get going. <laughs> it seems that way sometimes, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're getting there. That bit will be cut out of the internet, amen. <laughs> okay, now, there was some criticism of this woman. And it's interesting, it was Judas Iscariot who made the criticism. And he basically said, why the waste? And let me tell you this morning, a life lived for God is not a waste. Amen. Anything given for God is not a waste. Anything we sacrifice for God is not a waste. Now the world will say it is a waste. It's a waste of time to come to church, amen. Why would you give up your Sunday morning when you can lie in your bed, you know, when you can go to uh, St. Mattress and listen to the message by Father Headboard, amen. Why would you give that up and go to a church at, where they preach the word of God, amen. Where they use the old-fashioned King James Bible that is perfect, amen. That's a waste. What a waste of a Sunday. But let me tell you, it's not a waste to God. And what this woman did here was not a waste, amen. She came, and as the Bible says, she did what she could. I wonder this morning, have we done what we can for the glory of God? Now, maybe perhaps you can't go street preaching. And if you're a woman, you certainly can't do that, amen. Maybe you can't uh, uh, go to the far-flung places in the world. But have we done what we can for the Lord, amen. 
Have we given everything like this woman did? She came and the Bible says she broke a box of spike nard. Now that's very particular. That's very interesting because spike nard was very, very expensive. The world would say, don't waste my time. You ever knocked on a door and you can tell the moment the person opens the door, you're here to waste my time. I don't want to talk about Jesus. In fact, you can talk about Brexit. You can talk about politics. You can talk about football. You can talk about anything you like. But the moment you start talking about Jesus, amen, you ever see the shutters go down? And the rolling of the eyes, amen? But let me tell you, when you witness and tell someone about Jesus, it's never a waste of time. Never ever is a waste of time. That's what the world says. Don't waste my time. But none of us are going to get out of here alive, amen? Amen. One day we're all going to stand before a holy God. And he's not going to say, were you a good Catholic? Were you a good Protestant? Were you baptized? Were you christened? Were you confirmed? Were you a moral person? He's going to ask simply, what did you do with my son Jesus? Did you accept him or did you reject him? Jesus was on the way to Calvary. He stopped in Bethany and he was there to eat. And a woman came with a box of spikenard there to anoint his body for the burning, uh, for, for, for the burial. It says, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. Now notice this. And she break the box and poured it on his head. I remember when we visited for the first time Debbie's grandmother in America. And we went into her house. And we sat down on the couch. And the couch was covered in plastic. She was keeping it. For someone better. <laughs> there are people who collect things. Amen. And they say it's brand new in box. They get a special thing. A toy or a memento or something like that. And they keep it in the box. And, and I say what's the point of that? Amen. Take the plastic off. What are you keeping it for? When I visited my grandmother, uh, who was a very strange woman, when she would give us a biscuit, and a, 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 usually a rich tea biscuit, she would, and we were only little kids, she would take a plate after we eat it and hold it under our mouth. She didn't want our carpet to be messed up. This woman came to the Lord Jesus with this box, as we'll see in a few minutes, And broke it. When she broke it. It could never be used again. It was broken. Let's look at that box for a second. First of all. It was a container made from stone. It was like white and marble. It was used as a perfume vase. Or vase. If you want to call it that. I call it a vase but whatever. And this was something she kept. For her burying. The Bible says it was 300 pence. Now, a penny was a day's wage in that time. So you're talking about a year's wage. They say the average wage in the UK is about 20-odd, 25,000 pounds. So this perfume was worth 25,000 pounds. This was expensive stuff. (coughs) Was Jesus worth it? (coughs) Of course he was. She came and she broke it. We find it was six days before the Passover. It was a few weeks after the raising of Lazarus. It was a place called Bethany, which is just outside of Jerusalem. The people there were Simon, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, Jesus and the twelve apostles. But nobody else but this woman cleaned the feet of Jesus. You know what that tells me? There will be a few people who will sacrifice for the Lord. A few weeks ago I preached a message. Where are the nine? Where are the nine? Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one came back. And it seems to me that one out of ten will come back and praise the Lord. Amen. She came and she poured this on the head of Jesus. It was very expensive, but she deemed the Lord worth it. Let me say, no matter what God asks you to sacrifice, he's worth it. Amen. Amen. 
He's worthy of our sacrifice. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is not just someone who is a religious leader. He's someone who's worth it. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And as I said, it's about 25,000 pounds. And Jesus taught that he was going to die. She knew that he was going to die. She believed what Jesus said. You know, you might read the Bible, the Word of God, and you might hear the Bible, the Word of God, but do you really believe the Bible, the Word of God? Do you believe it's going to have an effect in your life? It's going to change your life. Brother Tommy was talking about this morning. He got saved in a prison cell. Amen. Acts chapter 16. There were some other jailbirds who who got saved in a prison cell. Amen. God can save anybody, anywhere, anytime. They'll simply come to him. All you have to do is ask him. It's really simple. Ask him and he'll save you, save you. One thing is clear. She gave all to Jesus for the glory of God. She, we, we see her sacrifice. Oh, we've seen that already. She did this for his burying. But she received a blessing because Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whithersoever this gospel is preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial for her. And I'm fulfilling that today. This woman didn't ask anything for Jesus. Didn't expect anything back. You know how sometimes people will, 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 what do they call it, quid pro quo. You do something for me and I'll do something for you, amen. You scratch my back and I'll scratch your back. But when you worship God, you don't worship him because of what you expect to get. I know there's a health and wealth gospel today that says if, you, if, you're, if you're where God wants you to be, you'll be healthy and wealthy. This woman took her wealth and broke it for the Lord Jesus Christ. She gave everything. A few months ago I preached a message. I was asked the question, how much, and I love the questions that people ask me by the way. How much should a Christian give? Well the answer is simple, everything. Amen. Now you can talk about 10%, 5%, 3%, 20% or whatever. But really, God wants everything. Amen. He wants us to give all. We sing that song, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender all. Have we really done that? I'm not talking financially. I'm talking about us. All. All means all. She gave everything. Jesus said her sacrifice would be remembered. We see the area of our sacrifice. We see the area of our service. She served the Lord. Jesus said she had done what she could. Now it must have been humbling for this woman to come and wash the feet of Jesus. I mean this is the Middle East. It's a hot place. I don't know if you ever lived in a hot place where it's don't get much rain. Not like Scotland, eh, amen. Uh, it gets dry and it gets dusty and people's feet gets all kind of, to use a good Scottish word, manky. But she came and washed the feet of Jesus. It was a humbling thing. Reminds me, the Bible says we have to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue. Saved and unsaved, Amen. Even the devil one day is going to come and bow the knee and proclaim that Jesus Christ truly is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But at this time, there was many people who were there who were kind of not sure about Jesus, kind of trying to make their minds up. And one of them in particular began to criticize. There's always one, amen. As all, no matter what you do, there's always one, amen. Uh, you can do a hundred things right. But do one thing wrong. Ah well then that's you finished. Amen. But that's not the way God is. Amen. Look what he says in Judas. In uh, chapter, Mark chapter 14. Verse 5 it says. And verse 4 it says. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. And said why was this waste of the ointment made. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence. And have been given to the poor. And they murmured. <coughs> Against her. They were upset with her. The Bible says they had indignation. They began wagging their tongues. Well, this could have been sold, you know, because money is more important than people. 
to many churches. Mm -hmm. Amen. This church is... This church has a philosophy. We're not here for the people here to build a church. This church exists to build people up who will follow the Lord and proclaim the, the truth. Amen. amen. We're not trying to build a building. Amen. We're trying to build a people who will go and take the gospel. But, 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 it, it was 300 pence. That, can you imagine someone came along and, 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 and put an offering 25,000 pounds? And I said, let's buy Bibles. <gasps> what a waste. <laughs> People are not going to take Bibles. Why don't you just build some nice curtains? What a waste. The Bible says they murmured. They had indignation. When you surrender your life for God, there will be those who will have indignation. I remember when I told my family the first time that I had surrendered to preach the gospel. They looked at me funny. Of course, they do that anyway. But they looked at me even more funny. And they said, why would you do that? What a waste. Why would you give up your life to serve God? What a waste. You're not, in fact, I had, I had one of them say to me, you're not going to get rich doing that. <laughs> I'm not trying to get rich. <laughs> Boy, if you do that, you're going to be poor. You're not going to have much. In fact, you, God may ask you to give everything and you'll be left a pauper. I'd rather be a pauper with Jesus than a prince with the devil, amen? amen. Much rather that. Yeah, the in heaven. Amen. 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 As the song says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. She gave up everything. We sing that song, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. Uh, and I will ever love and trust him in his presence, daily live. Have we really surrendered all? You see, a lot of times when we surrender, we don't break it. We can take our lives back. They call it in America, and I'm sure you've heard the term, an Indian giver. Amen. They give you something, and when they're your friend, that's okay. But once you're not their friend, oh, I want that back, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was contingent upon you being my friend. She broke the box. It could be useful for nothing anymore. The Bible says in John, in John, the odor filled the place. Everybody knew what she had done. She couldn't keep it secret, amen. She gave up everything so she could serve the Lord Jesus Christ. The, 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 she was criticized. They, they started talking. It says they had indignation. They murmured against her. Well, who does she think she is? Thinks she's better than anybody else. I wish I had that kind of money, amen. You think Jesus was interested in any of that? Yeah. He just saw the sacrifice. The world would call it waste. God calls it something else. In those days, they used to anoint uh, four classes of people with ointment. First of all, kings. Whenever a king in Israel was anointed, that meant he was the king. Priests were anointed. Prophets were anointed. The dead were anointed. She was saying, I know that Jesus is king, he's prophet, and he's priest, and I know he's going to die, but I know he's going to raise from the dead. You see, a little bit of sacrifice tells us how our heart really is. I heard a story about four brothers from the Middle East. They decided to have a feast. Wine was rather expensive. So each one said, we'll all bring a little bit to the feast. So the brothers being brothers, they decided, you know, wine's very expensive. What I'll do, I know my brothers will bring something. So in my wine bottle, I'll bring water. And it'll mix it a wee bit, but it'll be fine because they'll, they'll do something. So they brought all the bottles together and pulled it, poured them in. And they drank it. And it was water. They all had the same idea. Everybody expel, expects someone else to sacrifice. That's the pastor's job. That's the church member's job. That's the Christian's job. Jesus said to go into all the world to every Christian. It's all of our task. 
It's all of our responsibility to tell the world about Jesus. Amen. He's the best thing since sliced bread. Amen. In fact, he is the bread of life. Come down from heaven, the Bible says. Not only was she criticized, she was commended by the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, let her alone. You know, when you sacrifice something, God takes notice. Amen. One of, one of my favorite jokes, and, and I, I kind of like jokes every once in a while. But one of my favorite jokes is about two guys in the southern states of America. And they're walking along one day and they've been friends for 40, 40 45 years. And one says to another, he says, you know, we've been friends for so long. If you had a million dollars, would you give me half? And the man said, yeah, sure. We've been friends for so long. If I had a million dollars, I would give you half. Yeah, I said, that's great. That's good to know you, my friend. And after a while, the guy turned to him and said, if you had two palaces, would you give me one? And the guy says, of course. If I had two palaces, of course I would give you one. The guy said, that's great. Good to know I've got a good friend. So he went along and he said, you know, if, if you had two Cadillacs, would you give me a Cadillac? The guy said, of course. If I had two Cadillacs, I'd give you one. The guy says, it's good to know you, my friend. After a while, the guy turned to him and said, if you had two hogs, would you give me one? Another guy said, oh, you know I've got two hogs. <laughs> Amen. It's easy to give what we don't have. More difficult to give what we do have. And I'm not talking about money, amen. I'm talking about our life, <coughs> amen. Our time, our talents, our treasures, everything. Why well, don't I have time to witness? That's a waste. I don't have time to pray. That's a waste. I don't have time to read the Bible, the Word of God. That's a waste of my time. You're not wasting that if you're doing it for the Lord, amen. amen. David Livingston, the great missionary from Blantyre, said, I only have one life and that will soon be passed. I want my life to count for Christ. What's done for Christ will last. She did what she could. I wonder, what could you do for the Lord? What could I do for the Lord? First of all, and most importantly, could you receive him today? Could you be saved today? You know, it's one thing to know about and read about and learn about Jesus. But have you ever personally received him? Have you ever asked him to come in your heart and save you? That's the most important thing, amen. That's number one. That's what he wants everyone to do. He bars no one and invites everyone. He says, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Isaiah 1.18, uh, come now, let, let, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, it should be as white as snow. First thing you can do is receive them. Secondly, could you live for him? Now, I'm not asking you to die for him. That would be easy. Could you live for him? No, that's a waste. Could you live for him? Could you follow the Bible in every precept? This is one of the reasons why I'm against all these new versions of the Bible, amen. amen. Number one, they leave so much out. You know, if you don't like something in the Bible, well, just write your own. Just change as you like. Are we going to follow this word of God in every precept? You know, there are parts in this Bible I like. I like the 23rd Psalm. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I like that. Amen. That's a good verse. Comforting. Turn over to Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. This is a great sacrifice this woman made. But I'd like to show you the sacrifice you and I can make. As we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12. And verse number 1. It says, I beseech you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God wants you and I to be a living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice. A living sacrifice. A sacrifice that lives Daily, every single day. Could you follow the precepts of the Bible? 
We teach our children that little song, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Forget to read your Bible and forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Could you follow this Bible, amen? And let me say again, I'm talking about the King James Bible, amen? I'm not talking about the Mickey Mouse Bible, the NIV, the ASV, and all this nonsense, amen? I'm talking about the perfect Bible, the Word of God. Follow it in every precept. Could you witness for him despite the criticism? If you've ever witnessed for the Lord, you know what I'm talking about. The rolling of the eyes. Here we go. Oh no, we're talking about Jesus. Don't waste my time. First of all, no witness is a waste. Amen. Book of Isaiah says that the word that goes out will not return void. Amen. When you give out the word of God, they may not listen, but it's not going to be for nothing. Amen. It's not wasted. When you witness to your family, you know what it's like. Oh no, here we go. I've been called every name under the sun, amen. Uh, Bible, uh, thumper, and this, that, and the other, and oh, well, you know, you Christians, well, you know, and so forth. Could you witness for him? Could you trust him? Despite the circumstances. When this woman broke this alabaster box, this, this, this spike nard, this might have been the reserve she was holding all her life. This might have been her retirement. <laughs> This might be the thing she was depending on. It's better to depend on Jesus. She sacrificed everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we follow her example? Well, first of all, as I said, you can present your body a living sacrifice, which is a reasonable service. And in 2 Corinthians 8, 5, it says, this, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first... Gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. God does not want your money. Amen. I should have got a bunch of amens back there. Amen. Uh, God does not want your money. Amen. He wants us. It doesn't matter what you put in the offering or if you put anything at all. That doesn't matter. What matters is your heart. Is your heart a living sacrifice for God? Is your heart like this woman who came despite the criticism... Despite the cost, despite the circumstances, I'm sure it was embarrassing. All those guys in the room, all those people in the room, to come there and to kneel down. You know, it's interesting. You've got to kneel to serve the Lord. You've got to humiliate yourself. You've got to be humble to serve the Lord. You've got to sacrifice. I grew up, no one would make me kneel. Thank God one day I kneeled for Jesus. She broke the alabaster box. Sometimes we have to be broken to serve the Lord. Amen. Jesus said in John 12, 24 and 25, Very well I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Sometimes we have to be broken. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God has to bring circumstances and things in our life to break us. You ever been broken? Amen. I have. Wait, I can't be like I was before. Amen. Maybe God doesn't want you to be that way before. <laughs> Maybe He wants you to be different. Maybe He wants the, 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 the odor of your sacrifice to permeate the room. Except a corner we fall into ground and die, abideth alone. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hath hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And, there, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. The box was broken. Well, let me be honest. Following Jesus may break you. It may be difficult. It may be hard. It may even cost you your life. But he's worth it. Amen. He is worth it. I don't like to be broken. But sometimes we need to be broken. This woman washed the feet of Jesus with her own tears. It wasn't a waste. Are you ready this morning to break your life for the Lord Jesus Christ? Break it in such a way that you can't go back to the world. You can't, you can't go back to the way... That you lived before. Can you imagine the rumours in that area where this woman was. Did you see what she did? That expensive perfume. 
She broke it. She probably never lived it down. Everywhere she went, people pointed and said, that's the woman who wasted that fortune on Jesus. It wasn't a waste. No. Because all over the world, preachers are preaching about this woman who came and sacrificed. Sacrifice for Jesus can be hard, it can be difficult, but it's worth it for the glory of God. Because he is worthy. One of my favorite portions in, in, in the book of Revelation. And it, it, it talks about the, the, all the, the, the elders and, and angels coming together. And bowing down saying there is no one worthy. But he is worthy to open the book. I'm not worthy. You're not worthy. But he is worthy. All to Jesus. I surrender. I think that's a good song to end this message. As let's stand together and we'll sing uh, that song this morning. All to Jesus I surrender.